everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. I'm back again this week just doing another video for War in Christmas Village. As I mentioned in the previous video, the sequels to this are currently on Kickstarter. I will leave a link in the description below. I just thought I'd show you what some of the models look like painted. So we're going to start off with Dark Santa and we're going to be using Gory Red. And what I'll do is forget to film any of that. So I'll just pause it here so you can have a look what I did do. Just a quick glance at that and then I'll just finish this model off. Apologies for that. I did press record as you saw, but I must have clicked it again or something. I'm quite tired painting too much for the channel, I think, and need to get some sleep. But anyway, so this gory red is for his whole Santa suit, so cover all of that in, in there. Then I'm going to take white primer and mix in some cold grey, and this is to do the sort of shading of all the white. So I'm painting his beard in this, as well as all that fluff that he gets around his suit, so down the middle, around the, the, the bottom, uh, the rim of his jacket, and the cuffs of his shoes and and his jacket as well. Not his shoes, sorry, apologies. His trousers. I need to go get some sleep, guys. But I hope you're enjoying this video, even if I am extremely tired and make no sense. Also get that white around his hat, and that's that done. We're gonna use Leather Brown by Vallejo. I think any color, sack color would be fine, any brown. I just chose Leather Brown because I felt it was a leather bag. I forget that Vallejo's is this really bright yellow. Here I haven't primed, I forgot to mention that, I haven't primed any of this mod on using Vallejo's game color for, and that's mainly the reason I'm using the, the Vallejo set here is just because it works as a primer as well so I'm not having to prime this model in the minus two degrees we have and snow outside so as, as Christmassy as that is I don't want to get freezing cold at this time of night. I'm going to be using Pale Flesh next by Vallejo and that's to paint Santa's skin in and straight away I realize I'm getting paint all over my hands and I have a hobby holder this is the time to use it so quickly attach it to a bottle cap screw that in and bobs your uncle off i go don't have to keep touching the model now so yeah as i mentioned pale flesh that's vallejo's skin color again i actually prefer the survivor survivor skin from the army painter set but it doesn't work as a primer so i'm having to use vallejo here and this is for both his hands you could paint him in gloves maybe black gloves maybe white gloves i've just gone for bare hands so you can see I feel like you can see his hands quite clearly, so just using pale flesh there, his face as well. I'm using Beastie Brown next, and that's for the axe and his belt, but I'm also just giving his his shoes a prime there because I haven't got Vallejo's game color black, so I just need to prime it so I can paint it in my army painter's black. I'm also going to do the teddy bear in his sack in this brown as well, and the knife handle as well that's sticking in that, that head in his bag. Ugh. Uh, as I mentioned, yep, the belt in the same colour, so I'm just using my detail brush. This has been my, other than the red, this has been my detail brush. Oh, and the sack, uh, the regiment brush for the red and the sack, detail brush for everything else so far. Chain mills, chain mail silver. I've just recorded this like five times, I can't say it, that's as good as I can do. Chain mail silver is for the silver metallics, that's the axe handle and the buttons, not buttons, like metal bits of his of that dagger so the very bottom that's sticking in the skull and he's got a couple of studs on it and then i'm going to use vallejo's polished gold and that's for his belt his buckle and he's got a few studs running around it i'm also going to paint the top and bottom of his belt in in gold as well to add some detail i think uh it's in the model so let's paint it in something so it stands out a little bit there it adds a really nice little bit of detail to this model really jump suit shader that's the red shader by army painter i'm going to be coloring in all of his red suit in this being very very careful so this doesn't go anywhere i don't want it to i'm using the regiment brush where i can and i'll switch down to my detail brush and just getting all the little nooks and crannies i'm going to use light tone straight away with the detail brush there's no room for regiment brush now and that's to do the rest of the model so i'm going to do his face very carefully just where i want it to be shaded hands the same then i'm going to do his axe handle his blade and the whole of his sack as well as that that head that's in the bag then i'm going to tag in benson hooray benson's come to help me with the highlighting it is a christmas miracle but don't forget to big him up below if you do enjoy this video and you've enjoyed the part he's done especially he is a love vampire and he does love the likes so he's using gory red this is just a highlight back in that red of of santa's suit here uh, he's just going to be painting quite a generous helping of the red along all the the folds in the suit i think this bit lets the model down a little bit it's nice that it's got this detail but i just don't feel like trousers would have that many folds in i, I don't know what do you guys think let us know in the comments below i just think that's an overkill 
on the number of folds. It does lead to some nice popping highlighting effect. It just is somehow, I don't know, it looks like uh, like a sausage roll. I don't, I don't know. It, look, it looks a little bit weird. So, yeah, just highlighting it up. A few layers, a few coats of this gory red. Benson's using it very, very watered down, just building up that highlight. Then he's going to use gory red and hot orange mix 50 50 that's just because he's still got my bright red so we have to keep mixing a bright red this works perfectly and this is to add, add a final highlight on that red just along the very very edges of each fold just make it look like that light's catching each layer he's going to be using white primer just applying this around santa's frills along his um along his jacket and his all the cuffs and stuff and we quickly realized we'd quite like it to look quite fluffy. So we switch into one of my dry brushes. This is the one, the Art Pro one that Quick Draw Supplies uh, sent me. And this is just to stipple on some of this white and make it, it just makes it look a little bit fluffy. And next up is Pale Flesh. And this is to highlight that head that's in Santa's bag at the back. So that's just catching all the raised bits, all the bits that are coming out of the bag, just to try and give it a little bit of detail. I think this is the single worst part of the model. This, I don't know if there's a, uh, mold mistake or, I've, or something like that. this head has very very little details on Benson is trying to paint in some details so he's adding them a couple of eyes starting with a black base and then adding some pupils into that after not pupils sorry eyeballs then the pupils are the black so switching down to my insane detail brush just dabbing in a couple of pupils there so giving the figure a little bit of make-believe detail that I, th I think should be there, but it was missing. But then what I noticed is Benson somehow has painted, well, this is even worse, really. Santa has killed Sloth from the Goonies. So that is a little bit upsetting to me. But what I'll do is I'll fix Benson's creation later on in the video. Uh, but I thought we'll all have a laugh at Benson's eyes. He's very, very good at painting eyes. Not in that instance, though. He's highlighting Santa's face now and his hands. He's just using pale flesh again, just bringing some of that color that the, the tone had taken away. And that's just painting all the raised bits. So it's his nose, his cheekbone, the usual bit of forehead, all of his fingers as well. He's going to use, he's going to paint the Santa's eyes in the same way that he painted those bodies in, except this has got the detail, the, the, the lines are there to actually bring in these eyes. So white primer to add in the eyeballs after the black to give it a nice base and not missing anything there. And you can already see those eyes are forming nicely. And then a little dot using the insane detail brush just to add in a pupil to each of those eyeballs and boom, perfect. First time Benson did very, very well there. This is still a very, very small model that is 28 mil. It's bigger than some of the things we, we used to paint in, but still is quite small. It's also gonna be using dead black just to paint in some details on the teddy bear. So just an eyeball in each socket and painting his little black nose as well. It's gonna use dead black again and this is to paint in those boots. As I mentioned, I had to just paint them with a primer before. So I just used any color. It just happened to be a brown one by Vallejo. And now I'm using Dead Black by the Army Painter. Well, Benson's using it. Apologies, Benson. And uh, he's just painting in Santa's boots. Just I think they would be black, wouldn't they? That's that's the standard, the stereotypical one. He's then going to use Necromancer Cloak by the Army Painter. And that's to highlight those boots, starting with the laces, just painting those in. And then just catching along the sort of toe cap and the the sole of the shoe as well. Leather browns out, that's the same as the base color for the sack, just painting up all the raised parts, all those folds and the the rim of the sack as well, just bringing them back to the original base color, giving some definition to the sack as you can see. After the sack's done, just using the same color, the leather brown by Vallejo, and that's to paint in those straps that are on the, the, at the top of the axe, just to give some difference between that and the, the axe handle itself. Benson's just going to take a jumpsuit shader again and this is just paint his nose just give him a little bit of a red nose as you'd expect if he's out in the freezing cold we're going to use a white primer and cold gray mixed about five to one so it's very very white just a slight hint of gray and that's just to paint his beard and just catch a bit of the the cuffs that were missed earlier so that's just making his beard a little bit grayer than the rest which just makes it look a little bit more realistic a bit more interesting as well it's not just white on white on white etc so i'm back now with a bit of pva glue to start off with i'm going to be making a snow base for this again i've done this previously i'd like to have done, done, tried a different technique on the channel at some point i will try a bunch of snows see how i feel about each but i didn't have time here so i'm just doing what i've done before a third pvc pva pva glue a third white uh, acrylic paint unfortunately i have to keep using my nice vallejo one instead of a, a craft store cheapy cheap one and then a third hobbycraft um 
artificial snow. So I mix all those three together, as you saw, and then I just start applying this to the base. And I'm using a, a old paintbrush, a cheap old paintbrush that I don't care care too much about. So I'm not ruining my favorite paintbrushes. And then I'm just applying this, taking a bit with my finger, trying to blend it in, back of paintbrush, just working it as best I can without catching the model uh, at, around his feet as though he's trudging through a deep snow. Uh, after that, I'm just gonna get a little bit of the, the snow again and just sprinkle a little bit on top. This snow is quite reflective, it's quite glossy. So a little sprinkle on top just adds a little bit of realism, a little bit like some fresh snow has just landed, a bit of a glint, you know, like if you look across, across clean snow, it is quite shiny, it's quite bright. After that, I'm just, while that's drying basically, I'm just gonna finish up the model now and I'm gonna use Chainmail Silver again and that's to paint in the highlights of the head of the axe. So around all the edges of the blade and then polish gold out just to put back in the gold that the, the light tone had dulled. After that, I'm gonna take out dead black again and just paint around the rim of the base. Now the snow is completely dried and just making that sort of fade into the, the background really and bring attention to the important parts of the model. And then for the final, 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 final bit of painting, I'm gonna add some glistening blood just to make him look scary, uh, 18 plus him up. So I'm gonna be adding that to the edge of the ax and just blending it back as though the blood sort of ran and splattered up the ax blade. And then I'm gonna pull it under the ax just as though it's sort of been dripping really. And then I'm gonna try and fix sloth and just paint him a big stab wound with blood running down his face and covering one of those eyes up. Sorry, Benson, it took you a long time, but it needed fixing. And then I'm just gonna just drag the brush up his sleeve a little bit, up his up his jacket and just add it, uh, try and make it look as though blood splattered up as he was using his ax. So that's Santa completely finished. One hour 29, which I think was insanely fast, especially given the detail with the extra snow base and adding that blood on at the end. I'm pretty pleased with this model. I think it was a pleasure to paint. I had a, a lot of fun painting this. This was, a, this was a great model. I think it was detailed and easy to paint as I anticipated and just a lot of fun. So links in the description below if you want to check out their sequel. Thank you all very much for watching.